This hour, new and troubling revelations surrounding the apparent suicide of accused sex trafficker and convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. CNN has now learned that the 66-year-old was supposed to be checked on by guards every 30 minutes since he was taken off suicide watch late July. And that did not happen on the night of his death. Epstein was also supposed to be housed with a cellmate and not left alone, but he was left alone. And we're also learning that both guards that were on duty that night were on overtime, one of them working his fifth overtime shift that week alone. Katie Benner of the New York Times helped break this story, and she's joining me right now. So, uh, Katie, you know, first walk us through these protocols, what you learned about what is supposed to be in place, especially when someone attempts suicide. Sure, we'll take a step back. Uh, Jeff Epstein, as we know, last month he was found in his cell unconscious, and people were at BOP were investigating whether or not that was an attempted suicide. In the meantime, he was put on suicide watch. He met with a psychiatric uh, evaluator every day, and then on the 29th, he was taken off of suicide watch. We don't know exactly why that happened, but we just know that best practices for that occasion, that means that he would have a cellmate, it's supposed to be a deterrent for self-harm, and that guards would look into a cell every 30 minutes. And then um, that a, his cellmate, he did have one for a period of time, yes. but that, that cellmate was moved. Do we know the circumstances? Was that supposed to be temporary? Do we know anything about the elapse of time? What's going on there? So that's one of the things that Bureau of Prisons and the Justice Department, the FBI, and the Justice Department Inspector General are all going to be very curious about and they're going to investigate. Because as part of the condition of taking him off of suicide watch, mm -hmm. uh, the warden at MCC told the Justice Department that this was happening and that the conditions would be a cellmate and periodic check-ins. Now, we don't know exactly why the cellmate was removed, but we do know that immediately upon him being taken off of suicide watch, he was paired with somebody. So things seem to be sort of going apace um, per usual protocols for, mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks. So earlier, in the last hour, I spoke with a you know former a deputy a warden, not at MCC, but he has had some experience, he said, at MCC. And he said this is a reflection of a real leadership problem, um, perhaps, at that facility. Is that anything that you've mm -hmm. learned from officials there? Yeah, we, we've talked about this for, for several stories. You know, BOP, first of all, they have an acting head and have had one for a long time. Bureau a lot of, of people Prisons. Say, the Bureau of Prisons, excuse me, has mm -hmm. had an acting head for a long time. People say he's doing a great job, but it's very difficult to be empowered to tackle some of the big thorny problems that have existed for a long time at the Bureau of Prisons when you are in, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in an acting role. And then if you look at some of the federal facilities, you see a lot of overtime, you see people working a lot, and you mm. see sort of rising crime within different federal facilities that has been a problem that the Bureau of Prisons has tried to tackle for a while. Mm. And then, Katie, that this, at least one of the guards that's being reported uh, may have been on the fifth shift. Is there an inference there that someone may have been watching but then fell asleep? Or the, the follow-up question to that, too, is aren't there cameras and wouldn't there be a way in which to review what you know, what could have happened in terms of the watch of Epstein? Of course. So on the cameras issue first, mm -hmm. if the cell block that Epstein was in looked like similar cell blocks, we have been told that certainly there would be cameras. And so I think we're all very eager to see <clears throat> what the, the Justice Department has to say about that and what they find in any footage they may have. In terms of uh, this one guard's overtime, we found that in our reporting as well. He'd been working, you know, his fifth overtime shift. The question arises then, why is that guard guarding a prisoner who is considered, you know, so in danger within the prison population, mm -hmm. and possibly in danger of harming himself, and part of such a high profile case? Was it because there was nobody else? Was it because um, they're understaffed? Or was it simply because people were not paying attention closely to the situation? Mm. Yeah, powerful questions. All right, Katie Benner, New York Times, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let's talk further on this. Joining me right now, CNN law enforcement analyst and retired FBI supervisory special agent, James Galliano, also with us, CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor, Renato Mariotti. All right, good to see you both, gentlemen. So we've learned a little bit more since the last time we all spoke yesterday. James, what is most troubling, concerning uh, to you in what we're learning about protocols that were in place, but then reportedly not followed, such as having a cellmate, uh, 30 minute, you know, every 30 minutes, a guard to look in on. And apparently that did not happen the night of well, his death. 
Well, Fred, we spoke about this yesterday mm -hmm. in the wake of this astonishing news, and there's no other way that I can describe this. I spent 25 years in the FBI. I went to the MCC multiple times to interview prisoners or take parts in proffers. The fact that this could have happened while this inmate was in the special housing unit, which means under special scrutiny and separated from the general prison population, mm -hmm. there are cameras covering every inch of the MCC other than maybe some of the small conference rooms. Rooms mm -hmm. where inmates meet with their lawyers. And because no of those cameras particularly, do you believe that there should be answers to some uh, of those questions now? I do. By and, now. And, and I am anything but a conspiracy theorist. Um, so I look at it like this. There are two concurrent investigations going on, the Department of Justice's Inspector General mm -hmm. and the FBI, and I think we'll get some answers soon, Fred. Mm -hmm. Renato, what troubles you most about this story? What are some of your, you know, most, uh, you know, prominent questions here? Yeah, I'm really concerned as to why he was taken off of suicide watch. Mm -hmm. There's supposed to be written documentation of that. We haven't seen that yet. I suspect, uh, just like uh, James just said a moment ago, that we're going to uh, see that as part of the investigation. And I have to say as well, um, you know, the fact that the um, protocol wasn't followed, he wasn't, as you, mo you uh, spoke a moment ago with the reporter, mm -hmm. he, you know, they weren't checking up on him every half hour. We had a guard who was overtaxed. Look, James and I, I think, both know that there are, uh, our Bureau of Prisons can be overtaxed at times. Things don't always work the way they're supposed to. I had an escape. I've had, uh, unfortunately, uh, I've had uh, defendants who were harmed in custody. So it, it does happen, but the, in this particular case, very, very troubling. Yeah, and usually there would be documentation of rounds, right? I mean, at this prison or really any of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sources are apparently telling us that guards falsified documents saying that they did make the rounds. And does, if that is indeed the case, based on what sources are saying, does that now open things up, Renato, to a chance for any kind of criminal prosecution? I mean, yes, investigators are looking into what happened, but what happens if they find those, you know, egregious acts? Well, the question is, why did they do it? I, I, my, for one of my initial thoughts of what might be investigated here is, potential corruption. I know when I had an escape case, when a prisoner mm -hmm. escaped, that was one of the first things we investigated was whether or not uh, there was any potential corruption there mm -hmm. by any uh, prison official. So I think that would be definitely a potential charge if there was some other motive. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's simply that they're lazy and they're covering their tracks, well, that uh, it's possible that you could try, you could make that into a charge, but more likely I think mm -hmm. that would be a disciplinary action and a dismissal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so Renata, you used the word corruption and, you know, that would mean covering up the tracks type of thing. But, James, you mentioned the word conspiracy, which means there is a concerted effort. It would involve a number of people um, so as to help facilitate the demise of Epstein. M give me more of your thoughts on that. Well, first of all, let, let's understand what the Metropolitan Correctional Center does. It is a pre-trial detention center. There's about 800 inmates there, males and females, and it's been open since about 1975. Mm -hmm. The rooms, the cells in the shoe are eight or nine feet tall. The beds are bolted to the floor, and the prisoners inside of them are given sheets that are basically like tearaway, tearaway paper. So for this to happen, it just boggles the mind, especially in light of the fact that on July 24th, Fourth, he was, you know, he was found unresponsive in his cell because he had tried previously to commit suicide. That would have engendered them putting him on a 24-7 monitoring watch, which just, again, baffles me that he was allowed to be alone or not watch for that period of time to do this to himself. And then quickly, this was already a big case, you know, that he was facing. But now in his death, Renato, does that reveal that perhaps the case was even bigger than many people, you know, might have anticipated. Well, certainly, it's it, it, you know he had every reason to uh, be up despondent and want to exit the situation. I, I can understand why that was the case, but mm -hmm. certainly, uh, I think this is going to have re renewed and intense scrutiny on some of his potential co-conspirators. All right, Renato Mariotti, uh, James Galliano, always good to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Fred. Thank you.